To some, it is called unnecessary torture. To those who work in keeping Americans safe from killers, it's called necessary action. What the truth is about to become and how the CIA is now operating. A California politician making his voice heard about the release of an American still being held in Mexico. He'll join us from California, as long as it's not shaking. And plenty of warning that we in America will get hit with another big one from terrorists, and we need to be prepared. Around the dial with Chris Salcido from the Blaze Network on this and a whole lot more. The only show that questions everything in mere minutes. Midpoint is next. But first, I'm John Bachman. This is your Newsmax Now update in Missouri. The funeral for Ferguson's Michael Brown is now entering its third hour. Brown, of course, was fatally shot by a police officer back on August 9th. Hundreds of family members and friends poured into the church where the funeral is being held. Thousands more were gathered outside. Celebrity activist Al Sharpton will give the eulogy there very soon. Also, President Obama sent three White House aides to attend the service. Missouri Governor Jay Nixon said he would not attend out of respect. Also today at the White House, President Obama is meeting with Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel to hash out a strategy for combating Islamic State terrorists. We'll also get a normal White House press briefing today from Washington, during which we expect to get more details about today's meeting between the Commander-in-Chief and the Pentagon boss. Meanwhile, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Martin Dempsey, says the U.S. will only act if Islamic terrorists become a direct threat to America. General Dempsey added that he believes ISIS is still more of a regional threat to the Mideast. But the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee says the Obama administration's strategy may equate to too little too late. They are one plane ticket away from U.S. shores. One of the problems is it's gone unabated for nearly two years. Other senior members of the GOP are also pressuring President Obama for a more comprehensive strategy to combat ISIS. And also today, American journalist is now free. Peter Curtis of Massachusetts, who wrote under the byline Theo Padnos, had been held by a terror group in Syria. He had pleaded the world to help for his rescue. Three days. Uh, you have had 20 days. You have done nothing. I have three days left. Please do something. Um, please, journalists, do something. Please, anybody, do something. You must act now. Otherwise, I'm finished. Three days, please. You can hear the desperation in his voice. There are early reports that the nation of Qatar helped in the negotiation release of Curtis. Now, for nearly two years, he was held as the U.S. tried to negotiate for his release. There are at least three other Americans still being head by Islamist groups and Syria. And attorneys for Texas Governor Rick Perry are now asking a judge to dismiss the charges against him. A prosecutor has accused Perry of abusing his veto power in a politically charged indictment. Perry's attorneys filed that motion earlier today and say the law being used to charge the governor is too vague. Perry cut off more than $7 million in funds to a unit which prosecutes public corruption in Texas. This after the unit's leader was arrested for drunk driving and then refused to resign. In Northern California, firefighters are still searching for reported gas leaks after the largest earthquake hit the Bay Area in some 25 years. That quake injured more than 170 people, but only a few of those injuries were serious. Roads were destroyed and tens of thousands lost power. Take a look at this right here. Da damage from the earthquake could reach $1 billion, this according to a company that studies catastrophic quakes. Geologists say it's unlikely that a follow-up earthquake will occur, but aftershocks are expected for the next couple of weeks. More news ahead in 30 minutes. Now back to Midpoint. We find our nation at what some might have termed an inevitable crossroads, the need for government agencies to extract information from those seeking to kill us, and people here who demand it be conducted in a more humane and open fashion. Where does the CIA go from here? A California politician wants to know why nothing has been done to extract an American from his nightmare in Mexico. And that same guest will be weighing in on what, if anything, can be done to prepare for the big one. News call takes us to ground at the California earthquake. Sunday Sounders checks what the notable were saying on the news programs. And we will, of course, question everything. I'm at Berliner. This is Midpoint for Monday, August 25th, 2014. In the immediate aftermath of 9-11, uh, we did some things that were wrong. We did a whole lot of things that were right, but we tortured some folks. We did some things that were contrary to our values. I understand why it happened. Uh, I, I think uh, it's important uh, 
when we look back to recall how afraid people were uh, after uh, the Twin Towers uh, fell and, and the Pentagon had been hit and the plane in Pennsylvania had fallen and people did not know whether more attacks were imminent uh, and there was enormous pressure uh, on our law enforcement and our national security teams to try to deal with this. Uh, and um, you know, it, it, it's important for us not to uh, feel too sanctimonious in retrospect about the tough job that those folks had. While America is focused on such matters inside the Beltway as immigration reform, who will be the Democratic nominee? Can anyone agree on anything, including the specific color of towels used in the congressional washrooms? A recent article in the Washington Examiner pointed to the battle behind the scenes between the CIA and the Senate Select Committee over a report on the alleged torture of terrorist detainees during the George W. Bush administration. So are we right back where some believed we would always return to? What needs to go public and what needs to be done in order to extract actionable information from those seeking to kill Americans? Welcome back to Midpoint. Author of that article and former Deputy, uh, Deputy Undersecretary of Defense in the George H.W. Bush administration, Jed Babin. Jed, it's a pleasure to see you again. Thanks. Great to be with you. Jed, what is the CIA afraid of in this report? Well, we don't know because we haven't seen the report yet. But I suspect that there are things in there, uh, such as the CIA going beyond normal guidelines in certain interrogations and uh, actually doing some things that it should be criticized for. But the real other problem I think that the CIA is looking at is that this is probably another effort by the Senate Democrats. Don't forget the Republicans did not even participate in producing this report. Uh, and it's, I guess the summary is 600 pages, which tells you something. The real report is over 6,000 pages long. They're trying to relitigate a lot of the things that went on in the Bush administration, trying to hang on whoever is the 2016 nominee uh, the same sorts of things that you saw in the 2008 Obama campaign. So this is another effort to spin what happened by the Senate Democrats. I think the Senate Republicans probably should have done more in their side of the report. And the CIA is probably right to be quite concerned about it. On the other hand, and I don't want to go on too long about this, there is a lot of possibility, there's a significant possibility that the CIA did in fact torture people, and by using the word torture, I'm being very, very specific, not conflating the idea of usual and enhanced interrogations with the idea of torture. Now, when you used enhanced, uh, enhanced interrogations, and you pointed this out in the article, Enhanced Interrogation Techniques, EITs, you do point out that EITs, including waterboarding, were legal when they were used. So this would seem to be rather interesting that this simple point is being missed as certain people cover it and talk about this case. Yeah, and I think that's really the problem. A lot of people, and Republicans, including John McCain, have been very guilty of this themselves, of conflating torture with the EITs. That's what Obama has done from the very beginning, and it's simply wrong. In terms of the EITs, they consisted of things such as a slap in the face intended to degrade somebody, throwing somebody up against a wall, again, a flexible wall, intending to degrade them and humiliate them. This is the problem we have. McCain sponsored a amendment to the torture law, which had been pretty darn clear up to that point. In 2005, he sponsored and had passed an amendment that included the terms cruel, inhumane, and degrading treatment in torture law. So now a slap in the face might be considered torture because it's intended to degrade. And again, again, I don't want to go on too long, but when you saw waterboarding being used, and we don't know whether the CIA violated the normal pattern of doing it or not, in which case they could have violated the law, when it was passed and when it was actually used, it was legal because they cited, and I cite the document in our article, the document shows a legal opinion given to the CIA by the Justice Department it shows that the basis for determining that it was illegal was a very specific piece of the law which says that actions such as that, if they did not cause long-term mental harm, they could be legal. And they used the justification that thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of American pilots and special operators had been waterboarded in survival training, SEER school, survival escape, and so forth. You know, that was what they used because that was what the basis that did not cause lasting mental harm. It wasn't torture when it was being used. 
Is the administration more upset by the fact that some of these torture tactics were used or the fact that the CIA lied to them? Well, I think they're probably more upset that their effort to spin this thing has really not come very well for them, and it may very well be exposed. We don't know what really happened in the CIA. The Defense Department used waterboarding at Sears School, for example, under very specific guidelines. The instructors were always present, et cetera, et cetera. Medics were always present. And it's possible, I've heard reports, that the CIA did not follow this, the uh, waterboarding procedures that the Defense Department followed in Sears School. So it may have gone beyond what was permitted. It may have gone into torture. But again, the other thing that's going on here is the Democrats, and they've done it again and again and again, they have gone on with these invented scandals. And again, this may not be an invented one, but to the extent that it is an invented scandal at the CIA, they've done that to really emasculate intelligence gathering. Don't forget the church committee in the mid-1970s basically hobbled the CIA that it was rendered ineffective for, well, more than a dozen years. All right, so, so uh, uh, all uh, these things going on. let me look at that specifically. When you talk about the church committee, and certainly the CIA had to go to a certain point in order to then try and rebuild their interrogation techniques. And now, of course, they've gone to what some would consider to be over the edge again to get there. But realistically, though, what is it that you've got to do? I, I have talked to people who have been around the CIA, certain people who know what goes on in the CIA, and they have said, Ed, quite frankly, without certain interrogation techniques, we can't succeed. Someone will get past us. Someone will kill Americans. We know it's wrong, but we've got to do it. Is that still the case? I think that's absolutely true. Look, we, we know, and the public doesn't know a lot, but we know, for example, from George Tenet's memoir as head of the CIA, and he said that the enhanced interrogation techniques produced more valuable intelligence than everything else put together. NSA, FBI, all the rest of the assets and intelligence gathering methods we had really didn't even measure up to what we got principally by the, the EITs. So I think at this point, we have to be really, really careful. And President Obama did not be, was not careful when he outlawed all of the EIT. So the people in the CIA are telling you this. They're talking from history. They know what happens. They know what's not happening now. And since 2009, we have not used the EITs. I think that's terribly, terribly wrong. Chad, what about those who say, if we torture people, then we're no better than the bad guys? Well, I think to some degree that's true because we don't want to torture people. It's not necessary to torture people when you use the EITs. And again, it's things like slapping somebody in the face. Another one was a stomach slap. And again, another one was throwing somebody up against a wall. These are not things that inflict pain intentionally for the sake of inflicting pain. These are things that are to degrade people, to humiliate them, to break through the wall that they have around them these people, the terrorists are trained very carefully. They know what's in the Army Manual for Interrogations, which is now all we use, and they are trained to resist these things. So the guys in the CIA are probably telling you the straight scoop. Unless we do things that are outside the bounds of what the terrorists are expecting, we're not going to get the information we need. Jed, i got about a minute left here. I have in my hands from August the 5th of this year from the New York Times, an article by a, a commentary by Antonio Taguba. And basically it says that oversight will help the CIA. This sort of oversight release of this information will make it better in helping protect us. I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Well, it's possible. Look, General Taguba was one of the people who reviewed Abu Ghraib when it first came out. I somewhere squirreled away in my desk. I still have his report. But, you know, the, the question really comes down to, what is in this report? Are the Democrats trying to do something that's going to topple over our intelligence community once again? They've done it in the past. Or is the CIA afraid of being found out for having really tortured people or some combination? We don't know. At this point, all I can tell you is it's pretty sure that we're not going to get the straight scoop when the Senate report comes out. The one thing that I did catch, and I often go over a lot of these articles, and what caught me immediately is where you say the report apparently plays a lot of games with the facts. Uh, we are unfortunately out of time on this segment, but Jed, trust me, I think when this report comes out, we're going to have you on. We're going to talk again about this and see what those facts are that they played with. As always, thank you so much for being here. It's always a pleasure. Thanks, my pleasure. All right, take care. Later on this hour, radio talker Chris Salcido will take us around the dial for the latest from the border and thoughts on the looming ISIS threat. Next up, a California politician wants answers as to the status of an American who cannot gain his freedom from Mexico. That and a whole lot more coming up right here on Midpoint.